Halo teman-teman semuanya, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Berjumpa lagi dengan saya Merbat TV Apa kabar hari ini? Mudah-mudahan kabar daripada kalian semuanya Mudah-mudahan disehatkan oleh Allah Dilancarkan rizkinya Dan mudah-mudahan senantiasa Selalu Allah peramodah segala urusannya Amin, amin, ya rabbal alamin Oke, seperti biasa nih Sebelum nonton video reaction hari ini Saya Merbat TV ingin mengajak kalian semuanya Khususnya umat muslim Atau yang sedang nonton video ini Untuk bersama-sama istiqomah membiasakan diri bersolawat lebih dahulu kepada baginda Nabi besar Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allahumma shalli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. Mudah-mudahan beliau kelak senantiasa memberikan pertolongannya kepada kita semua, senantiasa memberikan syafaatnya juga kepada kita di yaumil kiamat nantinya. Oke. Di video kali ini mari kita mengaji lagi nih mendengarkan ceramah daripada salah satu ulama yang terkenal sekali. Beliau adalah Syekh Imran Hussein teman-teman Dan video ini bertajuk tentang Dajjal dan mata uang kripto Atau kita sebut sebagai Cryptocurrency Ternyata mata uang kripto Investasi mata uang kripto Itu ada sangkut pautnya dengan akhir zaman Ada sangkut pautnya Dengan Illuminati Dajjal teman-teman Wow sangat mengerikan Mari kita langsung saja react bersama videonya. Let's go. Oke, okay, kita play bersama videonya. Jangan lupa like, comment, dan share apabila video ini bermanfaat untuk kita bersama. Dan jangan lupa juga siapkan air minum karena ini sangat panjang sekali, teman-teman ya. Alhamdulillahi wa kafa. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ibadihi alladhina astafa. Tajal dan Mata Uang Kripto Syekh Ibn Hussein Subtitle 2019 Subtitle Indonesia ya Syekh Ibn Kripto Kalensi Wattaku fitnatan La tusibanna Alladzina zalamu minkum Khasa Brother Dr. Salim, brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh here at uh, wa alaikum salam Oslo, wa close to Heathrow Airport uh, in London. And we thank uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has made it possible for me to be with you again for a short period of time <coughs> uh, in Britain. This is the country from which the mysterious change in the world of money originated. And if you were born in Britain and you've been living all your <laughs> life in Britain, and you do not utilize the opportunity of being here to understand what happened in this country, then this will be an act of negligence on your part. Wow, sebuah kelalaian loh. Uh, our topic, there's a slight modification, it's cryptocurrencies in Akhiru Zaman. Wow, cryptocurrency di akhir zaman. Mm -hmm. And we begin <coughs> with a verse of the Quran from uh, with Surah Al-Anfal in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala delivers a warning Beware, <coughs> beware, beware of the fitna which is coming It's a test, it's a trial, it is something which will cause you distress as fitna and it is not going to target only those who are unjust and wicked and sinful. All will be tested. All will be tested. What is Allah talking about <laughs> when he speaks about warning us about tests which are going to come? And mm. our answer is this is one of them. This is one of them. The tests and trials that are taking place in the world of money. And our second comment is that it's a test and a trial with a rope 
around your neck. Wow, seperti tali yang And if you have leher. been reading and observing what is happening in the world of money, but uh, you will excuse me if I say most people don't have time for that. They're more interested in their biryani and going home to sleep than to devoting attention to understanding signs of the last day which are unfolding wow. ominously before their eyes but they're not observing it. If you have been observing what has been happening in the world of money then you would understand that with something they call cryptocurrency which we never heard about it just a year or two ago new terminology that the rope is tightening around the necks wow. of those who are being tested and who are failing the test our third comment is that our prophet Allah's blessings be upon him warned about riba. riba and uh, when you have studied the subject of riba you will understand that all the changes which have been taking place in the world of money are located in riba he warned about riba uh, it is the last revelation to come down in the quran on the authority of abdullah ibn abbas ibn that the last revelation to come down in the quran was the revelation in which allah declared war on those consuming riba he and his message oh, yeah. declared war and we're going to get a taste of that soon when the great war takes place the great war is coming i don't think the american armed forces want that war they must be for to fight libya <laughs> libya i don't i'm sure the russians don't want that war no but there are those who do want the war <laughs> And even Masyata. if they have to have a false flag attack to ignite the war, they'll do it. And once it is ignited, neither the Russians nor the Americans can do anything mm. to prevent it. So it's coming. Allah has declared war. And if you study the war which is coming from the Quran and Again, most people don't have time for the Quran. No. They have time for everything else. And those who do have some time lack the methodology for studying the Quran. <coughs> When you do study the Quran, you'll see that this war which is coming is not oh, going to be a haphazard war. Bukan rather, Allah will be on one side of this war and the other side is going to taste a bitter taste oh. and he's going to punish that side in this war which has been at the heart of riba Prada de grown riba. fat oh. with his banking <laughs> system and his monetary system which has suck the blood of the masses around the world for too long and now the chickens are coming home to roost mm -hmm. at long last we we're not afraid of death you and I but they are afraid of death we are not afraid to die you and I no and if we have to die if we have to make this korban so that the oppressor, the blood sucker, might be destroyed, we don't mind paying this price. Mm. The monetary system is based on riba. 
and Allah is going to punish that riba, those who consume that riba. And our Prophet, Allah's blessings be upon him, has warned about riba. He said the time will come when you not be able to find a single person in all of mankind who will not be consuming riba. And whoever says he's not consuming riba, verily the dust of riba would be upon him. Verily the vapor of riba would reach him. So there is no escape. None. But then what do we do? What should the Darul Ulum be doing this last 100 miserable years? And if sometimes you see a hint of anger inside of me, you will kindly forgive me. <laughs> yes, there is a lot of rage and anger inside of me. I shall. But I'm so trying so to control it. If there is no escape, these last 100 miserable years that this monetary system has come and ominous changes have been taking place in the world of money, what should we do? Surely the Darul Ulum and the Ulama should use the member of the khutbah of the mm -hmm. masjid to explain and to guide the people the prophet said allah's blessings be upon him but when you are faced with two evils and there is no alternative he said choose the lesser evil always choose the lesser evil and so when we approach the subject of cryptocurrencies and we look for means of responding to it and we find the news tightening around our neck like mm -hmm. i was flying from geneva to london. london and incidentally it takes an hour and a half from geneva to london and then takes three and a half hours from heathrow to ilford hotel <laughs> <laughs> and you want a bottle of water on British Airways, you've got to pay for it. They offer you nothing as a traveler. But I've been traveling for 50 and more years now. Wow. My first time. time on an aeroplane was in 1961 when I was 19 years of age. It's a long time I've been traveling and I know that only the the cheap cheap airlines there you have to buy whatever you want but all other airlines they offer you at least a bottle of water or a glass of water or something but not with this mysterious airline called British Airways oh mysterious and uh, when you want to buy your bottle of water and you take out Swiss francs because the aircraft started from Geneva so you should be able to pay with Swiss francs. They said, sorry, we don't take cash. <coughs> no, <coughs> we don't take cash. You have to pay now electronically, even for a glass of water. Hmm? So then I realized that really the news is tightening around our necks. Wow. And I cannot even get a glass of water if I don't have the card by which I can access money electronically. I think you would agree with me that the hour is now very late and we need an answer. Why are the distinguished scholars of Islam the ulama, the maulanas, the muftis, the ones who teach the Darul Ulum, the teach in the Jamia. Why are they not teaching the subject? 
Why are they not analyzing what is happening in the world of money? And why are they not guiding the people? That is the first question. But the second question Mungkin mereka takut. causes tears from the eyes. The second question is, not only are they not teaching it, perhaps because they don't know the subject, or perhaps they find the, must, the subject too dangerous, wow. but not only are they not teaching it, but when Imran comes to teach the subject, no, we won't allow him. We won't allow him. That is so sad. In order for us to look at the subject of cryptocurrencies in Akhir zaman we are not so much interested in how to use cryptocurrencies to make more money and get rich. How to use a system to be able to survive and to make more money. You, you need to go to some other scholar for that. <coughs> We're not so much concerned in all the mechanics of cryptocurrency and blockchain technology and so on. There are many experts who can do that. A scholar of Islam is not expected to do that. What we are concerned with is a simple definition of the subject of cryptocurrency and then more importantly is it halal or is it haram hmm. and then Tengah finally penting. most importantly of all why has it come at this time hmm. what is the role that it is playing at this time and how can we anticipate what is to come those are the more fundamental things that we would expect from Islamic scholarship. Mm -hmm. In the little time that we have tonight, uh, and I always learn from my audiences, I always benefit from your views, there'll always be someone who knows the subject a little better than I do. So there's a time <laughs> for me to speak and there's a time for me to listen. I travel extensively around the world and now I'm now 76 years of age. Wow. So I do have some yeah. experience of interaction with audiences in many parts of the world. The nice thing about here is that I can speak in English. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, imagine I, I accept your sympathies when I have to speak in French. <laughs> in France. <laughs> okay. And when I visit Pakistan in August, and they demand that I must speak in Urdu. <laughs> and you don't have a com command of these <laughs> languages. You can sympathize okay. with me. So did you get, yeah? Cryptocurrencies are simply another form of electronic money. And so we see a movement from the tangible to the intangible, from the visible to the invisible. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you've had more than a passing acquaintance with Surat al and if you are aware of the fact that even one word in the Quran or one phrase in the Quran might be enough, Allah says this is enough. Kathalik is one word. Kathalik. Kathalik is one word. And when Zul Karnain travel in the direction of the rising of the sun and came across a people Lam Najallahum min Duniha Sitra. He came across a people for whom we had provided nothing more as Sitra, a covering. So perhaps a people living a primitive life, how would he deal with them, how would he respond to them, and the response in the Quran is one word, just one word, Kadali. Kadali. You Hadi now have to go into that and understand what is Allah saying with one word, Kadali. Meaning, he met them like that, 
And he left them like that. He respected, he respected <coughs> their right to live their way of life, the primitive way of life. Mashallah. And so, if you've had more than a passing acquaintance with Surah al Kaf, you would know that you cannot dig a hole and bury electronic money, which is what was done in Surah al Kaf. And then he built a structure, a wall, Mashallah. on top of it. And this is not, this is not. stories, bedtime stories, hmm. for you to enjoy the story and say wah wah, because the Quran, the Quran came down, and the only time you will enjoy the Quran, the only time the Quran will transport you to worlds of joy and ecstasy is when you travel beyond the recitation of the Quran regularly in Arabic. And of course, mm -hmm. you know it has to be from cover to cover. You know that, don't you? I don't have to come and remind you of that. And when you finish, you start again. And when you finish, you start again until the angel comes to take you. You know that. I don't have to remind you of that. And if you've not been doing that, I advise you, start today. <laughs> to enjoy the Qur'an, you have to do more than simply recite the Qur'an in Arabic. You have to understand what you're reciting. Otherwise, continually reciting the Qur'an or listening to the Qur'an being recited in Salat, and you don't understand what is being recited. And someone asks you, well, I don't know, but it's a nice tune. If you remain like that, you are disrespecting the Qur'an and therefore disrespecting Allah and you'll have to pay a price for that. But to enjoy the Qur'an, you have to go beyond simply reciting it and getting the surface meaning. You will enjoy the Qur'an on that day oh. when you apply the thinking process. Allah sent down the Qur'an لِقَوْمِ يَتَفَكْ who think and when you think and ponder and reflect and seek to penetrate into the internal substance of the Quran on and that day you will enjoy the Quran jangan lupa teman-teman sambil minum ya agar tidak jenuh And so it's not just a story that he dug a hole <laughs> and he buried the money and then he built a wall on top of it. But rather it is an event in the Quran meant to convey a profoundly important message for Akhirul Zaman. And this is the Surah of Akhirul Zaman. Surah al Surah. Surah so they began with uh, they, they began first with paper <coughs> money and then they moved from paper money to electronic money and now we are with cryptocurrencies and the difference oh, between the electronic money and the new form of electronic money is that with the normal electronic money there was still the control of the governments over it and control over the banks over the electronic money the US dollar in its electronic form, the euro in its electronic form, the government still controls the euro, the US government still controls the US dollar and so on. The banking system still controls that money. But then comes a new form of electronic money. And this form of electronic money makes Russia smile, makes China smile, makes Iran smile oh. and makes Venezuela joyful with laughter. Allah but these were always the targets of the West. So why would 
Why would there be a new form of money that causes the targets of their tax to be so happy? Yeah. The answer is because the cryptocurrencies appear and perhaps ac actually are outside of the control of governments, outside of control of the IMF and of the banking system, and as a consequence allow the targets who have been suffering because of monetary attacks on them to get some relief. And so they welcome the cryptocurrencies. Hmm. So it's electronic money, which seems to have private origins rather than tough. public origins. And is privately maintained outside of the control of the banking system. Hmm? So private money. Strange, eh? Oh, wow. Never happened in private money before. Public money and private tak money. Ada uang swasta sebelumnya. We never had the term monetary system in the first place. There was no, no, no subject like monetary economics. Never. And then came a new form of money and a new branch of knowledge called monetary economics. And now we have a new, new term now. We have public money, we have private money. Banyak, banyak istilah, berarti. My responsibility is someone in Islamic scholarship. It's not my responsibility to go into this private money and examine all its mechanics and explain that to you. That's not my job. Somebody else will do. It. If it is outside of the control of governments and outside of the control of the banking system, and that pleases people, fine. That's their choice. But we don't get our guidance from private sources. <laughs> we get our guidance from the Quran and from he who was to whom the Quran was sent, Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam. And woe unto those who will turn away from the Quran. Mm -mm. Jangan sampai kita berpaling terhadap Al-Quran ya teman-teman ya Including knowledge of this subject Woe unto those Who do not direct attention to the Quran And to Nabi Muhammad Allah Either because they have more important things to do Or because they don't know how wow. To go to the Quran to locate that which explains the subject. They've been too secularized. What does the Quran tell us about money? In order for us to determine whether cryptocurrency is halal or haram, our Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam warned about a time when people will no longer care for the distinction between halal and haram. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but mashallah, you were here. And it's nice, really, to speak with a Pakistani audience in Britain. <laughs> it's far more comfortable to speak to a Pakistani Muslim audience in Britain than in Pakistan. <laughs> yes, mashallah. I tell you that. And, uh, I don't know what kind of reception I'm getting. I'll, I'm going to Pakistan for the first time in five years, <laughs> in, in August of this year. Uh, but I'm, I'm excited, really, I'm excited to find the kind of energy. You would not be aware of it, because you're living here. But I am coming from outside, and I have vast experience with Muslim communities around the world. So I find it exciting to see young Pakistani and Indian and Bangladeshi and Arab Muslims in this country. And they have such an appetite, such a thirst, such a hunger oh, what a house look. for knowledge of this subject. Wow. There are other subject. places in the Masha world Allah. I'll sit there for 10 years, 15 years, no one will come to me. None. 
to come to me to seek guidance from me, to seek knowledge from me. And here, even if they can spend 10 minutes with me, they are hungry for it. This is something exciting about Britain. Yes, and I, I am enjoying being in your company. MashaAllah, MashaAllah, MashaAllah. If we have to ask the question, does the Quran give us guidance? Concerning cryptocurrencies, is the halal or haram? It's not just Surah Al Kaf and the story about the digging the hole and burying the money. And you know, you cannot bury electronic money. You can bury only that which is tangible and visible. <laughs> it's not just a story about the young man who slept for 300 years. Wow, and after waking up after 300 years, they took the money which they had and incredibly so, incredibly so, it could still buy the food. I was five years of age when my father bought a motor car. He was a school principal Not and sure. he wanted to take me to school. So in 1947, he bought a motor car. Hillman Minx. Hillman and uh, he then took me also to the market on Saturday morning in the Caribbean island of Trinidad and I saw him buy a hundred oranges in a sugar bag for one dollar Trinidad money. Wow, dollar. Seventy years later, that's three hundred, eh? This is only seventy. Seventy years later, with that one dollar, I cannot buy even one orange. That is our money, over seventy years. It, it, it's a strange kind of a money, as though it's leaking. It's leaking. It's losing value. Uh, it is suffering from a virus called inflation. Eh? And it, it, I realized when I studied sufficiently the subject of Dajjal, I realized that this was his most dangerous weapon of all. This one. To control every single one. But you put your toe on the line if you step out. If you only step out, I'll destroy your money. It's called inflation. So, after 70 years, one dollar can't buy an orange. But after 300 years, they were using a different kind of money. Not this bogus money. Their 300 years, their after 300 years, their money had successfully stored value. Where does this, this terminology come from? We never heard anybody talking about money having a function of storing value. Nobody ever taught that to us. The Darul Ulum never talked about this. Yeah. Can, you, can you imagine now the rage inside of me? that I've been teaching this subject for 20 years or more. They wouldn't listen to me. So I'm all alone. And then they wouldn't even allow me to talk. What is his Akira? So let me restrain myself. The Quran has more pertaining to money than simply these two instances in Surah al -Kaf. The Quran speaks about a kintar as a treasure that Umar anhu he got up on the mimbar and you know nobody dares to confront Umar. No, not Umar The Prophet the Prophet وسلم, said about Umar if he is on one road, shaitan takes another road. This is Umar. So he found that people were asking too much for the meher. 
So he got up on the mimbar and gave a khutbah. And he placed a limit on the meher in, in nikah, the dowry. When he got down from the mimbar, a woman got up and spoke. Oh, really? Is it permissible for a woman to be in the masjid? To come in the masjid for salat? I didn't know that. Uh, really? Look at that. Strange Islam they had in those days, not like today. Today we banish them. Go for salat al Juma. Woman out! So, <laughs> the woman got up. Is a woman allowed to speak in the masjid? Amazing! Where did this Islam come from? Why did Umar not say to her, Woman, shut your mouth! What's wrong? We have a progressive form of Islam today, where women are not allowed in the masjid, and if a woman gets up in the masjid to talk, shut your mouth, you're a woman! She said, Umar, you can't do that. No man would have been brave enough to stand up and say that to Umar, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. None. But the woman got up and said, Umar, you can't do that. He didn't say, woman, why don't you know your place? You can't challenge me. No. They had a strange Islam in those days. Yeah. He asked, why not? She gave the answer. And she quoted the verse of the Quran where Allah says, if you gave them as meher even a kintar, don't take it back if there's a divorce. So Omar <laughs> stroked his beard, shook <laughs> his head. <laughs> he said, everybody have more knowledge than Omar. He went, when he went back up the river, he said, Oh people, I just gave you that order, I cancel it. A kintar is about 1200 dinars. Oh, so we had a free and a fair market, yes. But our free and fair market had such controls and checks in it for wealth to be broken up and not concentrated. Like, that wealth should not be concentrated. It should be broken up. That the maximum that someone could own and hold as a treasure is a kintar. Wow. And today you have 1% of mankind owning some 90% of the wealth of the world. And you call that progress? No, the Quran has more to it on money than these three that I have mentioned to you. If you want to know what is the definition of, the, of money in the Quran, we're not going to have the time for that tonight. But I have my book entitled uh, The Gold Dinar and Silver Dirham, Islam Silver Dirham. and the Future of Money, and you can read that book in one hour. Wow. You don't need more than one hour to read that book. You'll find the definition of money from the Quran and the Sunnah. It is, you have the word dinar in the Quran, you have the word dirham in the Quran. MashaAllah. And a dinar in the Quran is a gold coin, a dirham in the Quran is a, a, a silver coin. But then when you go from the Quran to the Sunnah, you find that if there was a shortage of gold and silver in the market in Medina, what would they use as money? Answer? Dates dates and so you have the hadith of the prophet which i hope you are familiar with i don't have to teach it to you again which is crucially important for the definition of money in islam i don't know whether the state bank of pakistan has the interest any interest in the subject what is the definition of money in islam the islamic republic of pakistan <laughs> 
He said gold for gold, silver for silver, wheat for wheat, barley for barley, dates for dates, salt for salt. Indicating that if a transaction involves an exchange of gold for gold, or silver for silver, or wheat for wheat, or barley for barley, or dates for dates, or salt for salt, it must be an equal transaction. You cannot have one kilogram on this side and two on that side. No. Because if mm. you do that, it's not only haram, it's riba. Oh, Why? you have a tool. I'll explain in a moment, inshallah. It must be hand, equal to equal. He said, it must be hand to hand. Meaning, meaning, meaning a cash transaction. It's not allowed as a credit transaction. Hand to hand meaning a cash transaction. Other than that, he said, it will be riba. What is common to all six is that they all use as money. When gold and silver were scarce in the market, in Medina they'd used, go, they'd used wheat or barley or dates or salt. And so we have a definition of money from the Quran and Sunnah that money in Islam is always money in which the value of the money is located inside the money. Because mm. some people have difficulty with the use of the word intrinsic. So let me break it down intrinsic. For, to help them. Intrinsic means that the value of the money is inside the money. Mm. <clears throat> and it is a value created by he who alone creates wealth. Allah creates the value. Allah That's the first Allah thing Allah about money. In the it is not a value which is located outside of the money and therefore can be manipulated by those who would like to manipulate it to their advantage and to your disadvantage. Is that so difficult to understand? Hmm? Secondly, that money in Islam is when gold and silver coins are in short supply, it would be articles of food consumption. Food consumption. And mm -hmm. there's great wisdom in that. Because governments could ban you from keeping gold. As the government of the United States of America did in 1931. Yes, yes, that's what they did. Ban you from keeping gold. You had to turn over all your gold to the US government, which then gave it to the Federal Reserve, which is a private bank, and exchange it for you with paper, US dollars. Wow. And then after some time had passed, they changed the value of the paper dollars, and then <laughs> you were ripped off. That's what the US government did in 1931, I think it was. I have a book entitled The Prohibition of Riba in the Quran and Sunnah. It's, it's not available here. Mm -hmm. um, I have to... I have to... Um, rewrite that book really. It was written about 20-25 years ago and I can't find the time to do it before it can be published again in a new edition. In that book I have all this history in, in it. So the, the governments can ban gold and that might become again, again. so be careful. If they ban gold and they ban silver, they can't ban sugar. They can't make it illegal to use sugar or rice, flour, so wheat or barley. So articles mm -hmm. of food consumption therefore assumes strategic importance now oh, for yeah. freedom. <laughs> they can't be banned. But these are articles of food, food consumption which are in abundant supply in the market and which have a shelf life so you can't use mangoes as money even if it's the best mangoes of the world from Punjab 
you can't use mangoes as money. Why? They don't have a shelf life. But if you are oh, in yeah, the island of Java in Indonesia, you can use rice as money. But uh, the use of, of the Quran, you would know that you would not shell the rice skin. Good, because that's for the same sort of use of the Quran. The story of the king and the the seven cow, cow, cows. <coughs> You'd keep the skin on. So it's called paddy rice. I think maybe it's paddy rice. After you take off the skin, then you can polish the skin. <laughs> no, you, the, it has a longer life if you keep the skin on, the rice skin on. Or if you're in the isle, if you're in a Fidel Castro's Cuba, What would you use Oke okay, teman-teman semuanya itulah video reaksan hari ini Masya Allah luar biasa Cerami ini penuh dengan ilmu Insya Allah kalau kita paham dengan apa yang disampaikan oleh Syekh Imran Husin ini Insya Allah kita akan jauh dari perkara riba Jauh daripada hutang-hutang yang menguntungkan dengan cara riba Maka kita akan tahu mana yang halal dan mana yang haram Di sini kita menjelaskan, kita pelajar bersama di sini adalah Tentang mata uang kripto di akhir zaman ini Ternyata ketika kita memainkan investasi di mata uang kripto Kita sadar di dalamnya kita terdapat prosedur atau konsep yang mendekatkan yang mendekatkan kita kita dengan cara-cara riba padahal Allah sudah melarangnya Nabi pun juga sudah menegaskan perang terhadap orang tetap negara yang memainkan perkara riba hal itu tidak diperbolehkan dalam Islam teman-teman Mungkin di negara lain yang tidak mengerti Islam mereka boleh-boleh saja tapi Islam tidak memeras sesama manusia kalau dibayar uang 100 ringgit Malaysia kita harus bayar uang 100 ringgit Malaysia. Misal ada perbankan di sini karena di sini banyak memainkan di dalam perbankan itu permainan riba selalu diterapkan. Bagaimana caranya agar kita keluar dari hal seperti itu, teman-teman? Itu tergantung daripada kita masing-masing ya. Kalau kita tetap tidak mau, ya kita tabung saja di rumah seperti itu. Oke, okay, itulah video rasan hari ini. Bagi teman-teman yang suka video ini, tinggalkan like, comment, and share. Jangan lupa juga subscribe channel dari Badamir Bad TV ini. Kita akhir dengan kalimat Hasbunallah wa dbalu wakil. Niman maulah wa liman nasirullah. Halo laku tullah billahi lalilah dim. Kita ketemu di next video berikutnya. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.